Welcome back to Mornings. Well, every two minutes, somewhere in the world, a woman dies from cervical cancer. Others suffer very traumatic treatment. Well, screening is the key. Pap smears are recommended every two years, but some women don't have them. They resist the procedure. They can be isolated in country areas, or for others, it's a cultural issue. There is now a new option for testing that is available, and it could help in the fight against cervical cancer. Joining me this morning, Professor Brian Morris and also cervical cancer survivor, Kim Brush. Welcome to both of you. Hi. Good morning, Kerry ann Kim, some years ago, you suffered cervical cancer. What was the, uh, the treatment that you received at that time? After diagnosis, it was a cone biopsy to see the extent and then just a barrage of appointments and, and then surgery radical surgery. Which was? Hysterectomy. A full hysterectomy. How devastating for you at that time was it? Is it is extremely devastating and psychologically it has a great impact on you. How so? Well, I'd only had one son and I always thought that I'd have many more children and I had to deal with the psychological effects of not being able to have any more children. Did you think that could ever happen to you? Absolutely not. Never as most women think it won't happen to me, but it does. Mm. It's such a familiar story, Professor, isn't it? I mean, you know, we've seen the advertisements about pap smears on television. Women are told have a pap smear every two years, but this happens. That's right. Um, there's actually been a decline in the uptake of screening. Mm. And uh, women are being encouraged now by the government to go for regular pap smears. That's important. And pap smears have helped reduce cervical cancer since the 1970s by 80%, which is great. However, there are cases where uh, women do attend regular screening and yet still get cervical mm -hmm. cancer. So women do have to attend the screening regularly. Mm -hmm. But not over 99%, let me stress that because I see so many errors in the newspapers, over 99% of cervical cancer is caused by high-risk types of human papillomavirus. And therefore, um, for the last 20 years, after developing a test, which is the first test in the world patented mm -hmm. for, for uh, human papillomavirus detection, um, I, we're now seeing the availability of a way where women can test uh, be tested for human papillomavirus. So this HPV, how, how do you contract um, uh, cervical cancer? Uh, Human papillomavirus is sexually transmitted. <clears throat> so, for example, um, if a woman uh, has sex with an uncircumcised male, mm -hmm. the risk is over fivefold higher. Mm -hmm. So there are all these risk factors. But at the end of the day, it's the virus that causes the cancer. So we need, and we have improved in the last 20 years. You know, the issue has improved in the last 20 years with regular paps, uh, pap smears, but still women a lot of women are still not having this. Although you had had a pap smear, That's um, correct, Kim, yeah. hadn't you? Mm. At, what, at what stage? Because two years. That, you'd had a pap smear two years before and then all of a sudden you were diagnosed. Yes. Yeah, well, that's the tragedy of it, isn't mm. it? So it can happen to anybody. Um, and also one of the, area, one of the reasons I think um, uh, we're talking about having a more regular pap smear for, for people is clearly an option. But you, where were you living or where are you living? Now? I live now in the country near Coffs Harbour. Is it, is it difficult for women to have regular um, examinations in isolated areas? I think so, yes. I think it takes some time to get in to see a doctor because there isn't that many up there, so it does tend to be put off. Hmm. And I think, you know, right. naturally, a lot of women are putting it off. We know we should do um, and have a pap smear every two years, but women put it off because uh, it's not a fun day at the office. Hmm. And also, uh, you know, the isolation for some women in, the, in this country is very important. Yes, well, that's, that's where this uh, new test comes in. Uh, it's really more a new sampling procedure because what it involves is a tampon. And all women know how to use a tampon. There's enough cells on a tampon from all parts of the cervical vaginal region mm -hmm. uh, to have uh, papillomavirus um, in any cells that if a woman is infected, they can be detected, uh, that virus can be detected very easily in a laboratory. So a woman can just mail it to the testing lab using... So that's uh, the new test? Uh, yes. You do this procedure, you do it at home, yeah. send it, it off. It's, how, it's, I mean, the I key also, is also how accurate is it? It's not a home test. Mm. It's a home 
sampling using mm -hmm. a tampon oh, gotcha. that then gets sent to a lab for testing. And I, even this morning I read in The Australian, got it, they got it totally wrong. And mm -hmm. I hear this over and over. Um, I mean, and we are talking about saving women's lives here. And we're not right. talking about an excuse for women not to have pap smears because that's, that's clear and, uh, and undenied. So with a, with a home test, people just got to know, is it accurate? Yes, uh, this is a molecular test and it's absolutely accurate. Mm. It's 100% um, accurate. So if there is a HPV type there that the test is trying to detect, the test will detect it. Then why the controversy? Why is there a su suggestion that, um, that women won't take up an option like this? And it is only an option. Yeah. Well, uh, pap smears have been around uh, for over 50 years. Uh, but this is just another way. It's not an attempt to replace the pap smear. The pap smear will be very important for many years to come. Mm -hmm. But this is a way of testing for the virus that causes the cancer. Are there some women who should be tested more than every two years? Uh, certainly. If women uh, have a lot of partners, uh, if, if they smoke, if they have a bad diet, there are all sorts of factors, including genetic factors so too. So ha having um, a test like this an option, would that have been an option for you if you'd been able to do it yourself, do you think? Definitely. I think that most women, another thing to think about is they don't want to go to the doctor. They feel uncomfortable yeah. about it. It's very traumatising to go. And I believe that this new thing allows people the privacy in their own home and it gives them a better chance. Well, clearly accuracy is the key. As long as it's accurate and women are confident with that, it can be one of those in between because we do resist it. There are isolated um, areas and there are cultural issues for some people as well. Yeah, and, and you know, more than 40% of women mm. don't attend for regular and screening. And what age group are we looking at? When should a woman um, have a pap smear? Um, as soon as, well, within a couple of years of becoming sexually active. Mm -hmm. when, and to whatever what age? age? That is. Um, really, through, the, I mean, there's, there are studies, of, a Japanese study, in fact, found that uh, autopsy samples from women in their 70s, uh, a significant portion of them had uh, abnormalities, so including papillomavirus. Well, thanks right. for clearing up some of those issues for yeah. us this morning. Um, and Kim, thank you very much. And you are one of the survivors and, uh, and we congratulate you and appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Professor Morris and, uh, and Kim Brush joining us. We've got more coming up on Mornings. Here's an idea for you.